Hey guys, Popcorn Recaps here. In today's video, I will be telling you the story of the supernatural horror film, The Pact. Spoilers ahead. Enjoy the video. The premise of this movie surrounds Annie, who upon returning to her childhood home due to her mother's death, experiences strange and supernatural occurrences that she believes are related to her sisters and cousins' mysterious disappearances. The film begins with someone taking slow breaths in the background as we see a close-up of someone's eye, the color changing from green to blue. We are shown the layout of a house as the slow breathing continues. In the same house, a young woman by the name of Nicole wakes up and walks to the kitchen while talking to her sister Annie on the phone. Nicole and Annie discuss their mother's funeral, which Annie doesn't want to attend, being quite adamant about not returning to their childhood home. Nicole grows more upset with her sister as Annie asks about the last time Nicole did any drugs. This question angers Nicole as she isn't interested in discussing the past. The sisters talk about the terrible relationship they had with their mother, Annie stating that she never forgave their mother, while Nicole desperately tries to work out the funeral arrangements. During the night, Nicole makes herself a cup of tea, the light eerily glitching behind her which she doesn't notice. She sits at her computer, suddenly feeling something touch her neck, which leads her to turn around, but seeing no one there she brings her attention back to her computer, video calling her cousin, Liz. Nicole talks to Liz eager to see her daughter Eva through the screen. Nicole walks around the house for a better signal, as Eva tells her mom that she is unable to see her face. Finally, the connection improves and Eva sees her mother, asking mommy, who is that behind you? Startled, Nicole looks behind her seeing the door to the walk-in closet wide open. As the video call disconnects, Nicole places her computer on the floor. Nicole slowly walks to the open door of the walk-in closet and disappears into complete darkness. In the next scene, Annie arrives at Nicole's house, which is the childhood home they lived in with their mother. Annie calls out for her sister but gets no response as she walks through the house. Annie receives two voicemails from Liz who is concerned as she hasn't heard from Nicole. Annie calls Liz, but the call goes straight to voicemail, telling Liz that she doesn't know where her sister is, stating to remain calm and insists that Nicole will show up sooner or later. Annie calls Nicole's phone, hearing it ringing from the same walk-in closet Nicole disappeared into. Annie opens the door, finding Nicole's cell phone when suddenly, she hears a sound in the distance. Entering a bedroom, she finds a jewelry box on the floor with two keys and a picture of children inside. Annie spends the night, dreaming of the house, and the pictures lining the walls when she is pulled from her dream by a loud noise. Exiting the bedroom, she walks through the house into the kitchen seeing the fridge door wide open. Annie closes the fridge door and turns on the light, seeing a jar of pickles and some butter on the floor which she quickly picks up. She calls out for her sister hearing the sound of glass breaking in the distance and ventures into the hallway, cutting her foot on a piece of glass. Pulling out the shard of glass, she sees that a folded picture of her pregnant mother had fallen. As she unfolds the picture, Annie sees another pregnant woman wearing a floral dress. The next day, Annie arrives at the church for her mother's funeral. Going into church, the camera lingers on Annie's face, showing that she has one green eye and one blue eye. Annie looks at her mother in the casket, tears threatening to fall from her eyes before she quickly turns away and takes a seat. After the funeral, Annie is approached by her cousin Liz who has Eva, Nicole's daughter, with her. Liz inquires about Nicole, telling Annie that it's been three days since her disappearance. However, Annie tells her that Nicole probably couldn't handle the funeral and invites Liz to come to her mother's house. At Annie's childhood home, Liz puts Eva to sleep before joining Annie in the living room. Liz inquires about a cross necklace that Annie wears and Annie says that her mother gave it to her when she was a child. Annie talks about how miserable her mom was and how badly she treated herself and Nicole, even going as far as to say some people just shouldn't have kids. Liz thinks this is an unfair statement, but Annie compares this to Nicole who she thinks abandoned her child, stating that her family has a history of running from situations when times get tough. She uses her dad who left his family as an example, as well as Nicole. Liz questions why Annie came back and Annie states that she did this for Nicole as she will always be there for her sister. That night, everyone sleeps in their rooms as Annie dreams, seeing someone sitting on a bed crying. Her phone mysteriously flashes on, showing an address. A loud noise wakes up Liz and she goes to investigate, but seeing nothing she returns to bed. However, a person's shadow lingers behind her. Annie wakes up, dropping her phone on the floor before going to the bathroom, seeing someone walk past the bathroom door. Frightened, she calls out for Liz as the lights flicker behind her. Annie runs to the kitchen and grabs a knife, finding Liz's bed empty as she once again calls her name, walking around the house. Looking in the distance, she sees the door to the walk-in closet is wide open. Suddenly, an unknown force pushes and drags her to the floor while Annie blindly swings her knife. 
The force lifts her into the air and continues to drag her, but luckily Annie runs outside, but remembers her sister's child. Annie quickly runs back into the house, hearing Eva crying inside. The force once again pulls her as she runs to Eva's room, the force pulling Annie directly into the wall, causing the knife to become deeply wedged into the wall. However, Annie escapes with Eva and runs outside, terrified and out of breath. Well, it seems as though Liz is now dealing with not one but two disappearances. At the police station the next day, Annie meets with Bill Creek, a policeman who inquires about last night's incident stating that he knows Nicole. However, Annie is aware that everyone thinks she's crazy. Passing her some ice cream, Bill questions Annie about her life, but she isn't interested in talking. Bill says Annie reminds him of his daughter, getting her to laugh and open up to him. Bill talks about Annie's story, stating that some police officers went over to check the house last night, but Annie states that she won't return there. Bill informs her that her cousin Liz is missing, saying that they found signs of a struggle. As Bill starts to suspect Annie, she says that she doesn't need his help before walking out of the office. She surprisingly goes back to Bill, saying that she is determined to find out what happened to Nicole and Liz. Bill then tells Annie that Eva is upstairs as Annie finds her, coloring in a room with other children. During the night, Annie's phone glitches at a motel, once again showing a specific location. When tapping on it, she sees a faint picture of a woman in a floral dress. She searches for the address on Nicole's laptop, discovering that this woman in the picture changes her position, appearing to be pointing at something. Annie goes outside to the vending machine and hears someone breathing heavily as she walks with a soda to her room. Peeking inside a window, she sees a man sobbing on the bed. Back in her room, the lights flicker just as they did at her mother's house, seeing the lady with the floral dress lying on the bed, decapitated. In slow motion, Annie runs to the door attempting to leave, but it abruptly closes. She wakes up in the morning discovering that this was a dream, running outside and starting her bike, eager to get away. In the following scene, we see Annie sitting in a diner with a blank notepad and a pen as she pulls out some wrinkled papers, one appearing to be a blueprint of her mother's house, which Annie studies intently. In the next scene, Annie bravely goes back to the house with Bill. Annie removes the knife she left in the wall the other night and tears apart the wallpaper, revealing a door on the other side that is locked. Annie gets the keys from the jewelry box we saw earlier using one of them to unlock the door. Bill peeks inside, unable to turn on the light, as he quickly goes outside as Annie picks up the same knife from the floor. Bill returns with a flashlight as Annie puts down the knife before they both enter the abandoned room, seeing a mattress spring. Bill asks if Annie has any memory of this room from her 16 years of living there, but Annie has never seen this room in her life. Annie looks through a hole in the wallpaper, realizing that she can see into the living room. She is shocked to discover that these holes are all over the abandoned room, and each looks into a different room in the house. Annie is convinced that her mom wanted her to find the secret room and is certain that there is some clue that will help her find Nicole and Liz. Bill doesn't believe Annie, simply offering to take some pictures. Later in the day, we see Annie arrive at the cluttered and noisy house of a man called Giles. Annie tells Giles that she would like to speak to Stevie. Giles seems very protective of Stevie, but Annie is allowed to talk with her. Stevie remembers Annie from high school as Annie gets straight to the point, asking about this hidden ability that Stevie has. Accompanied by Stevie and Giles, Annie goes back to the house as Stevie takes off her shoes at the door. It's here that we discover that Stevie is a psychic as she asks to be taken to Annie's mother's room. As Stevie sits on the bed in Annie's mother's room, she declares that she isn't picking up anything. Stevie asks Annie where they should go and Annie points down the hall. Stevie walks down the hallway as the lights begin to flicker. Stevie states, oh she's here. As Giles pulls out a flashlight and Annie follows with a puzzled expression on her face. Stevie questions Annie about the walk-in closet, as Annie replies that the closet space was used as a punishment when she and her sister misbehaved. Stevie says that someone is in the closet space as Giles tells Stevie to be careful. The lights continue to flicker and Giles' flashlight completely stops working as the entity appears to be taking all the light. Stevie says that she can see the horrible things that happened to Annie in the closet and opens the walk-in closet, inquiring about what's on the other side. Annie takes Stevie to the abandoned room as she suddenly starts to shake as if she's cold. Giles gives Stevie a juice box as she insists that there is a second presence in the room, which is Nicole, Annie's sister. Stevie starts to shake again as she leans on Annie's shoulders, screaming, it's where they go when they go. Stevie faints and is dragged by an unknown force under the spring mattress, shouting the name Judas as she shakes the mattress. Stevie and Annie look up to the ceiling and Stevie screams, shocked to see a lady in the floral dress on the ceiling. 
Giles lifts Stevie in his arms, and everyone runs out of the room. Annie is shocked to see the woman's slanted body as the lady suddenly turns her head, causing Annie to run out of the house quicker than a professional athlete at the Olympics. Now outside, Annie continues to ask Stevie about the identity of the woman. Annie believes that the woman is not her mother as she asks more questions, desperate for answers. However, Giles slaps Annie, upset with her for pushing Stevie too far. This doesn't deter Annie who demands to talk to Stevie, but Giles drives away in his car. Annie then realizes that it is not her mother who is trying to communicate with her and is now determined to find the identity of this woman. Back at the motel, Annie searches for the name Judas on her laptop discovering that this is the name of a serial killer with many victims. She clicks on an article that takes her to an age-restricted website. Annie clicks that she's over 18 before being admitted to the website entitled Joey's World of Death, Serial Killers AZ, which lists several infamous serial killers. Annie comes across the Judas killer, who unlike the other killers has a question mark where his face should be. The website shows several of his female victims. Annie clicks on a map of his known victims, several skulls highlighting the locations where the victims were found. She clicks on an article about his last known victim, a 20-year-old woman named Jennifer Glick, also seeing a graphic picture of the woman decapitated. She recognizes that this is the same pregnant lady with the floral dress that she saw on the folded picture, accompanied by her pregnant mother. Late at night, Bill looks at the photos he took from the house on his computer, seeing a ghostly hand pointing to something. The next day, Annie goes to the same location where the picture of Jennifer was taken. She walks out into the grassy area, glancing at the picture where suddenly Jennifer now appears to be pointing. She ventures in this direction, seeing a church in the distance. Bill goes back to Annie's house, looking at the camera where the photos were taken. He turns the video on and begins to record, seeing that some shadowy object appears on camera, but he can't see it with his own eyes. He walks to the walk-in closet, opening the door and turning on the light, which glitches before going off completely. Using his flashlight, he examines the small space. As his camera continues to record, we see someone walk past the lens. Meanwhile, Annie goes to the church, finding the doors to the worship space locked. The words Our Family History are printed above a group of photos and Annie recognizes her mom in one of the photos. Looking at the pictures, she also sees Jennifer Glick, noticing that she is wearing the same cross necklace, which was given to Annie by her mother. She notices the name Charles Barlow, looking at a man at the edge of the photo, back at the house. Bill looks at the same picture from the jewelry box which we saw Annie pick up earlier in the movie. He is startled by a cross falling on the bed as the lights flicker. Suddenly, a hand reaches out and stabs Bill in his neck. Well, it was certainly a bad decision for Bill to go back to the house alone, wasn't it? Bill falls to the floor, blood pouring from his wound as he dies. Continuing her investigation, Annie goes to the Hall of Records and gets information on Charles Barlow and her mother Judith Barlow discovering that they were both born at the same hospital. Annie then discovers that her mom had a brother which Annie was unaware of. There isn't much information, so Annie decides to call Stevie as Annie insists that she needs her help. Annie explains that the woman trying to connect with them in the house was killed a long time ago. Stevie continues to say that the presence informed her that Annie's mom did something that she didn't want anyone to know about. Stevie insists that this entity or spirit is trying to help them, stating that she can give Annie a tool to communicate with the other side, asking if she has anything from this woman. Annie then states that she will use the cross around her neck to communicate with the spirit. Stevie instructs Annie to go back to the house where Annie lights a candle and writes the entire alphabet across the floor, in addition to the words yes and no. She places the cross necklace on the ground asking, Are you? Jennifer Glick. Nothing appears to be happening until the cross moves to yes, which causes Annie to jump to her feet. Although scared, Annie asks another question. What do you want me to know? As the necklace spells out the name Judas, confirming that Judas was her mother's brother. The necklace moves to yes, stating that Judas murdered Jennifer. Jennifer moves the cross to the word below as the door suddenly closes and a man crawls from beneath the floor. Annie hides behind a curtain, watching a skinny man who we now know to be Judas emerge from a crawl space. Terrified, Annie covers her hand with her mouth as Judas sits on the bed before he removes a shelf and crawls through a small space. Annie steps from behind the curtain and peeps through a hole seeing Judas in the kitchen, eating from the fridge. Annie looks at the crawl space where Judas came from, pulling out her flashlight, becoming sick to her stomach when she sees Bill's body at the bottom of the crawl space. Seeing that Judas is preoccupied, Annie steps down into the crawl space, the light flickering before the room turns black. She uses a lighter to see and retrieves the gun from Bill's dead body, discovering her sister dead in the crawl space, with her throat slashed. Annie quickly crawls up the stairs, 
back into the abandoned room. Peeping through another hole, Annie sees Judas crying on the bed, similar to what she saw in her dreams. Unfortunately, she drops the casing of the gun, causing Judas to get up, walking slowly through the house. Annie holds her breath, watching as Judas stands directly in front of her on the other side of the wall before he crawls back into the abandoned room. Once again, Annie quickly hides behind the curtain, slowly loading the gun. Judas looks around before he catches Annie who fails to fire the gun as Judas knocks her unconscious. In the next scene, Annie awakes in the walk-in closet with her hair tied to a pipe noticing that her hands and feet are also tied. Annie hears Judas crying in the distance, as she reaches for a hanger that dangles above her. Successfully arming herself with the hanger, Annie uses her body weight to push the door open as Judas appears with a knife in his hand. Annie screams at him as he walks towards her, turning off the closet light as Annie begins to fight Judas, kicking him in his face, causing him to fall back. Unfortunately, he cuts her on her chest, but Annie continues to fight back by stabbing him with the bent hanger. Now in control of the knife, Annie uses it to cut her hair free as Judas struggles to pull the hanger from his torso. Luckily, Jennifer's spirit pulls Annie from the closet and into the abandoned room, allowing Annie to reach for the gun and quickly shoot Judas in the head. This causes the door to the abandoned room to fly open, as well as the front door as light pours into the house. Looking at Judas, Annie realizes that his eyes are the two different colors of blue and green, which are identical to hers. After this incident, Annie goes to the salon and gets a haircut and later signs papers to sell the house. Later on, Annie sits in front of her childhood home in her car and cries, overwhelmed at all that has happened to her and her family. Annie sticks the pictures of Nicole and Liz to her rearview mirror and drives away, finally free of the house which tormented her throughout her life. Annie drives away, now having full custody of Eva, the two of them looking ecstatic in each other's company. During the night, Annie writes in a journal before snuggling in bed with Eva. The movie ends with Annie in a deep sleep, dreaming of her childhood home, which is now under renovation, when suddenly Judah's eye appears in the peephole. And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more movie recaps like this. Good night.